morning this is mr palmer here uh, with another video on computer science slightly cold this morning so i might have a nasal sound before proceeding with this video make sure you go over your notes on processes and buses so here i am just waiting for you to catch up so processor basics uh, talking about von neumann architecture and the fetch decode execute cycle big questions so what are the important features of von neumann architecture and if you understand what it's about then you understand why the processor speed is limited um, according to this technique. Also, how does the fetch decode execute cycle work? So historical perspective Computers here you can see are all analog Okay, so they had what we would call program control You can see from the final image on the right hand side that they were basically Connected using wires and switches and that routing would determine how the program was executed Okay uh, Von Neumann architecture was slightly different because it was uh, a digital computer which made use of stored programs. So the memory and the data are, are held, sorry, the instructions and the data are held in shared memory. All right. Some form of stored program did in, exist before. If you think about punch cards, you can go look that one up. All right. But this was a radical departure from analog computers. They had four parts to it processor where you had arithmetic and control units along with internal memory the registers inside the cpu you had memory to store data instructions that's the main memory input and output devices and then you had some form of mass storage on which programs and data could also be held ready for use so if you think about it you have the processor and main memory uh, between which data and instructions uh, flow input and output devices to receive data and give out information and the mass storage for uh, holding the, those programs and data and within the processor this was a key part you have an arithmetic and logic unit for actually carrying out the instructions and a single control unit for uh, figuring out what to do with instructions and then a, a number of memory registers or performing those tasks all right so here what we're talking about are the uh, serial nature because we have a single control unit so there's one bus used to transport the data instructions there's one control unit within the CPU that means there's only one instruction being performed at a time so if you think about your programming that you've done thus far then you should be able to see what the, the parallel there is between the two programs are in sequences Okay, even iteration and selection are um, sequences of instructions being carried out, either choosing which sequence or repeating a sequence, right? Instructions are stored in the registers, locations are modified as a result of instruction execution, and sequences basically of instructions carrying out one at a time uh, relate to the serial nature of a volume and processor. One control unit, one bus, one instruction with one piece of data being carried out at one point in time. Now, instructions being carried out involves three parts, fetch, decode, and execute. And then once an instruction is executed, and then the next one is fetched and decoded and executed and so on and so on and so forth until the process is complete, that particular job or uh, the operation of the computer. Now, your teacher may have called it fetch, execute. I will call it fetch, decode, execute. Same difference, just depends on who you're talking to. So how does that whole thing work? First of all, in the CPU, you need to know about the different registers. Okay, you've got program counter, you've got the memory address register, memory data register, current instruction register, and an accumulator. Should be quite self-explanatory what those are. Program counter counts where you're up to in a program. The memory address register uh, contains the address of the next instruction or data. The memory data register holds the data that's been fetched. The current instruction register holds the instruction that the program counter has been pointing to, and the accumulator is used to store data while processes are being carried out. You also need to know about the arithmetic and logic unit. As I've just said, that's where the uh, operations are carried out, and the control unit is what figures out what is going on. And there are buses being used to transport data around. <coughs> So, first part of that process was fetch. 
So you copy the address from the program counter to the memory address register. Program counter is pointing at something in primary memory and that address is copied to the memory address register. The memory address register can then get that data from the primary memory and copy it to the memory data register. All right, so at the moment it's copied over some a binary string. The memory data register copies that to the current instruction register and then the program counter is incremented to point at the next instruction that needs to be carried out. And that's where the fetch process ends because the uh, current instruction register now contains the current instruction that needs to be carried out. The next thing that needs to happen is the CPU needs to figure out what the hell to do with that instruction. So it will split the opcode from the data. Okay, when I'm talking about the data, the opcode is more most likely to be an actual address, not a piece of data. Uh, and the next, I will, I will explain what, what how that process works in a moment. The control unit basically interprets an opcode and then that's the end of that process because the control unit has now determined what the actual instruction is about. It then is ready to execute. So the data, right, which is the address, is copied from the current instruction register to the memory address register. Get the data from the primary memory, copy it to the memory data register, and then you can execute the instruction. And that's the end of that process. What I suggest you do is you watch the next bit where I explain about opcodes and operands because you might not remember what they are. And then you come back and you watch this bit again and try and you, know, you might need to watch it a couple of times to get this process into your mind. Quite important you understand how these three parts of the fetch decode execute cycle work. So when it fetches an instruction, the program counter has been pointing at something in um, uh, an instruction in the memory that was transferred to the memory address register it was fetched and it was put into the memory data register and it's got something like this. So this is for a CPU with a 16-bit word length, okay? So the 16 bits over there, the first four bits represent the opcode and the last 12 bits represent the operand, okay? The opcode is the code that represents what that instruction is for. So all instructions will have the same pattern. Right, because if it had a different pattern, then it would, the CPU wouldn't know what the hell the instruction was about. It would, it would, it would start performing the wrong instructions and the wrong memory addresses. So the opcode contains the instruction. The operand contains either the data that needs to be operated upon, or the address in main memory where that data is located. There are other forms of um, opcode operand. For example, in this case, there's two operands where we're saying perform this instruction, which is the opcode, on this operand 1 and store the result in where operand 2 is. And then there are uh, three operand versions of uh, words as well. When I'm not, you don't need to know about those though, but it's just giving you an idea. So the result of that instruction um, where we have a single operand is stored in the accumulator. So I would suggest you now rewind and go back and watch the bit which explains how the fetch decode execute cycle is working. When uh, instructions are executed, right, the contents of the memory data register, oh, that's uh, an error over there. <laughs> when uh, instructions are executed, right, the uh, contents of the memory data register are sent to the accumulator, not to the MDR, all right? However, when there's a jump instruction, the contents of the memory data register are sent to the program counter because that program counter now needs to know where the next instruction is located. So this means that the program counter can actually change more than once in a single clock cycle because it's incremented to point at the next instruction originally, but then the instruction that's currently being interpreted says, you know what, you need to go somewhere else to look. And so the program count has been updated a second time in the same clock cycle. So to recap, von Neumann architecture, digital computer system with four parts. We've got processor, uh, 
with a arithmetic and logic unit and a single control unit, has main memory for holding programs and data that are in use, input and output devices, and you have mass storage connected to it for storing programs and data. And then uh, I suggest you go back and you watch that part of the video several times, which explains how the fetch decode execute cycle is working. All right, you should be able to think about what the features of the von Neumann architecture are and think about why is the speed limited in von Neumann architecture. Single instruction at a single time because of a single bus, it will bottleneck because of that. And then finally, how does the fetch decode execute cycle work? Fetch the instruction, uh, figure out what it's doing using the control unit and then carry out that instruction. Thank you very much. It's Mr. Palmer finishing off over here and I will put up another video very shortly on processor architectures.